The next few videos are going to be about recreational drug use. The first ones are about MDMA. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the general effects of MDMA and its metabolism. And then in the next video, we'll talk about the toxicity and how to manage it. All the references for the material that I talk about are going to be in the description of the video below. So MDMA is 3,4-methylene-dioxymethamphetamine, which is a bit of a mouthful. It's got a bunch of other names, Molly, Mandy, MDMA, Ecstasy, XTC, Disco Biscuits, the hug drug. I've never heard anyone call it that, but apparently some people do. Um, people use various terms to describe taking MDMA, like dropping, rolling, flipping, raving. And a quick disclaimer that this video is not condoning the use of drugs. It's an educational video for medical professionals. Now, MDMA was first synthesized in 1912 by Merck, the uh, big German drug company. And they were actually trying to make something called hydrastinine, which was something they used to stop bleeding. It was nothing to do with partying and it was nothing to do with weight loss, which is another common rumor. And it was first used on humans in about sometime in the 70s. and It was mainly used in the context of psychotherapy. And then shortly after that time, it started appearing on the streets and being used at raves and, uh, well, I guess in discos in initially. It can come in various forms. So MDMA in its purer forms comes as crystals and the color of the crystals depends on the exact method they use to synthesize it. There's at least five chemical methods you can use to make MDMA. And in pill form, it's called ecstasy. And this is supposed to be the same substance, but kind of has a reputation for being less pure or mixed with other substances because you don't know what you're taking when you're taking a pill. Obviously a crystal or a powder could also have other substances and you wouldn't necessarily know. So we're gonna talk about three categories of effects of MDMA. The first one is psychostimulant effects, and these are mainly the ones that people want when they're taking the drug. Then the next ones we're gonna talk about are autonomic and cardiovascular effects. And those people would generally consider side effects. They're not really beneficial and they're not really enjoyable either. So in terms of the psychological effects, the, the main one that people want is a kind of sense of euphoria. They get euphoria, they get a sense of well-being, people get an overwhelming sense of happiness, they become more extroverted and sociable, they feel empathic towards other people, and they get a sense of closeness to the people around them. They can also get some mild perceptual disturbances. It's not considered a hallucinogenic drug, but people do get abnormal perceptions when they take MDMA. So those are the psychostimulant effects. We'll next talk about the autonomic effects of MDMA. So these are things like a dry mouth, sweating, tremor, uh, dilated pupils, jaw clenching or bruxism, people could refer to that as gurning, um, and agitation and restlessness. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about the cardiovascular effects. Um, these are tachycardia, hypertension, and increased myocardial oxygen demand, which isn't usually a problem in healthy subjects, but can be a problem if someone has pre-existing heart conditions. So those are the, all the effects of MDMA. Now, I'll talk about the toxic effects of MDMA in the next video, uh, but these are the kind of general effects, even when used recreationally and even um, when there are no complications developing from the drug use. We're going to end the video by talking about MDMA metabolism. It, there's a couple of pathways for MDMA metabolism, and I'm just going to simplify it down to say that there's two main enzymes involved. One is this um, CYP2D6, which is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. Um, so that's in the liver. And then the next one is COMT. Basically, both of them act sequentially and produce uh, metabolites of MDMA. Now, the reason this is somewhat relevant is that there was this theory for ages that some people might be poor metabolizers of MDMA because some people lack the genes for the CYP2D6 enzymes, maybe 5 or 10% of the population. So there was this whole theory that maybe those people don't break down MDMA very well. But actually, what's been found is that that's not really clinically relevant because everyone becomes a poor metabolizer of MDMA once they've taken a second dose. And that's because... There's this thing called mechanism-based inhibition where basically the me metabolites of MDMA bind to these enzymes that break it down and inhibit the process. So the metabolites of MDMA basically inhibit its own breakdown, i.e. the second dose is going to be more potent and longer lasting than the first.
A lot of toxicity can happen when multiple doses are taken. And in most trials or therapeutic uses of MDMA, like when they trial it for PTSD, they use just single doses to try and avoid this happening. In the next video, we're going to talk about the toxicity of MDMA and how you manage it if you see someone with it in the emergency department.